guys, it is Mark with Sailing Lunacy, and once again, I am in a small hole in the bottom of our boat. Uh, if you remember from our passage to Grenada, we had major fuel problems. Uh, actually lost one engine due to it, tried to change Raycor filters at sea, actually took a wave over the back of the boat, filled the Raycor filter up with water. It was a disaster. Uh, so while we were in Grenada, we pieced together this kind of janky uh, fuel polisher built out of our old Raycor 500 in a simple faucet pump. Uh, and as promised in that passage video, uh, today we are going to basically upgrade this to a legit system. One of the downsides of only, the, there, there's two, well, actually there's three, okay, there's a lot of problems with this current install. Uh, the first one is I use non-tin wire, uh, which over time is going to corrode, so we've got to redo the wiring in this. That was just a temp deal. Uh, the other problem we have is it's only a single Raycor. Uh, so you, you got a choice. You can either go super fine and go to like a two mil, in which case it's going to clog really fast, or you do a 20 micron, in which case it'll, it'll filter more, but it's not going to get all of the particulate out. Uh, and the other major problem with this is there's no gauges in the system. So other than trying to gauge the sound that the faucet pump is making, you really can't tell when the filters are clogged. So what we're gonna do today is put two Raycors in, actually one Raycor and one knockoff Raycor, uh, three vacuum and or pressure gauges in the system that's gonna allow us to monitor this and tell us when the filters are going bad. And uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get to the wiring or not today. Uh, may save that for another day, but at least get these filters up to where we can use, use them and kind of tell what's going on inside the system. So this original system is built from, this is just the old Raycor 500 that was on the port side. Uh, it was leaking pretty bad when we were doing the work in Grenada. So I uh, put a new one in on that side and then I took this lighter, basically busted this seal loose. This gasket in here is bad, but I used a silicone, not a silicone, I used a gasket maker uh, to redo this so it's not leaking. Because of that, I don't want to have to take this off and clean the bowl multiple times. Uh, so I've debated on whether or not I make this the 20 or the 2 in the new system. And this is just a simple faucet electric fuel pump. Uh, you can pick these up all around the world uh, for a relatively cheap price. A lot of gen sets use these as a, as a primary, not a primary, as a lift pump to get to the gen sets. Uh, so lots of chandleries carry these and also automotive stores. Uh, and then fuel selectors. So what we've got going on down here is basically our inputs. Uh, this this valve, three-way valve allows us to draw from either tank. And then this three-way valve allows us to put back into either tank. So what that's going to allow us to do is obviously polish fuel from either side, but also it's going to function as a transfer. So uh, I can transfer fuel from port to starboard and vice versa while polishing fuel at the same time. All right, mostly because once we bust the uh, fuel lines down downstairs and I absolutely hate the smell of diesel and getting that stuff everywhere, uh, I've sketched out on the table here what we're gonna do because I know once I get into this, I'm not gonna wanna stop what I'm doing to film some of this. So you gotta use your imagination a little bit. We're basically, uh, from the three-way valve that's on the port side, we're gonna be fuel in, vacuum gauge, 20 micron old Raycor, another vacuum pressure gauge. Uh, so that's basically gonna be showing us if this is clogged, the vacuum should go up. If the two mic is clogged, the pressure should go up. This cardboard box represents the faucet uh, fuel pump. Then we're gonna go to our two micron uh, Raycor knockoff, followed by one more vacuum slash pressure gauge. Uh, when we fire up the system for the first time, we're gonna take a reading on each gauge. And that's gonna be the baseline for the system. Uh, probably take a Sharpie or something and draw that on each gauge. And then as the filters clog, whether it's the 20 or the two, you'll see those pressure vacuum gauges fluctuate. Uh, then at some point we'll have to determine what is bad flow 
and that's when we'll start swapping out filters. So that's what we're going to do. If you've watched any of my other plumbing videos, you also know that I hate plumbing. So I spent 20 minutes in the hardware store yesterday picking out all of these valves and fittings. And as you can see here, I'm going to be short one combiner or uh, coupling fitting. I uh, got to go downstairs and see if I have one in the kit. If not, I am off to Ace. One thing I'm noticing on the knockoff uh, Raycor is access to the mounting brackets in the back is pretty terrible. So unless you were to mount this first before you do all the plumbing and make provisions for that to just slide over and then just tighten up the fasteners, it is a real bear. Um, you really can't get uh, back into there at all once it's plumbed in. So that's a bit of a problem. but. Sooner or later, I'll find the right tool to get in there. Sometimes, you get what you pay for. Alright, so she's mounted. Nice and steady. Uh, now we just got to tighten a couple of hose clamps. Redo the electrical. Uh, today, I'm not going to do, because the plumbing uh, hardware store crap took so long, I'm not going to redo the electrical today. I'm just going to wire it back up the way that it was and we'll replace this wire another day, I promise, because you don't want non-tinned wire on your boat. It just won't last. Uh, and I've also been saying all day that this was going to be a 20, and this was going to be a 2. That's because I've been working on water makers a lot, and the first filter on a water maker is a 20 mic. So this is actually going to be a 30, which is your standard uh, Raycor filter. And this is going to be a two. So, uh, if I could go back and reshoot all that footage and get that right, I would, but not going to happen. Uh, so, 30 mic filter, two mic filter. Uh, before we get this going, we're going to have you see these little nipples on the top of these vacuum gauges. Uh, these are on here for transport. You've got to snip the top of those off to open them up to the atmosphere. The downside to that is if you get an excessive vibration in the setup, it can throw the oil out, and it also means that you can't mount them sideways or upside down because the oil will flow out of them. Uh, but you do need to snip the top of these anytime you use this style of vacuum gauge. They'll actually work without the fluid in there. Uh, that fluid is mostly just a damper for the, for the meter, so if you have vibration going in there, it keeps the the uh, needle's got to move through that oil, which just slows down that vibration, makes it easier to read. Uh, Thank you, Jesse. Jesse opened this the other day when we were playing with it. Now I'm covered in diesel. All right, so we're getting the on the first stage. We're getting about a four inches of mercury vacuum, and then we're getting. About a two psi lead. Uh, so that is pulling from the port side. I did notice that there was switching from tank to tank when, we, when I go to the starboard side. This thing goes up all the way to 11, which is the same reading I get if I close this valve. 
So uh, somewhere in the tank pickup or somewhere in this hose, I've got to walk it. So now I've got to try to deal with that. It's always something. Obviously, if uh, we were ever pulling anywhere near 10 on that first gauge, then that would mean that this uh, 30 mic is definitely clogged. So we're probably going to strip change that around, I don't know, 6 or 7. Uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on and see how long that can run for a plug -in. But now i got to figure out where the, uh, where the blockage is on the starboard pickup. That is tank wide open. Clearly that's a There was just a blockage. I'm going to try to dig that out just to see what was in there. Uh, maybe it's just clear that it sucked out of the tank. But it was right at where the hose, put the hose bar is where the blockage was. Interesting. Alright, so we got the blockage cleared in the hose. And now we're going to do another test. And just to make sure that we're getting kind of the same pressure readings from the start of the core and the switch back and forth. Here it goes. Oh, nope. Got to read my own directions. That's pulling from the port tank. Now we're pulling from the truck. Now that we got this uh, install mostly wrapped up, other than the janky wiring, which I'll do later, we are going to put uh, install this bar in here basically just to give this stuff some protection. We do store a lot of stuff in here, and if you get in sloppy seas, I just don't want anything uh, hitting into these and knocking the fuel supply loose. Fuel is good if you need the motors. Thanks for watching this DIY episode of Saline Lunacy. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And hopefully you'll get a polisher installed so these diesel worries never have to become a problem for you.